I am so excited about my next guest, Amazon best-selling author and master life coach, Perry Jones Grossman. She is here to share with us her inspirational story of hope and educate us on how transformation creates your next best chapter in life. Welcome to Wake Up with Marcy, Perry. Hi, Marcy. I'm so excited to be a part of your show. I'm a big fan of your show. Oh, thank you. And that means so much coming from you. So... I, you well, know, I just you. love that you're going to come on and, and just be so open with your story. And this is about helping people, right? We tell our truth yeah. so we can help other people. And yes. one of the things that really starts your story is mental health, mental illness. Mm -hmm. And you were affected at a very young age. So can you tell us about that and how that did affect you? And, and, sure. and even in starting to grow up, um, how that affects you. Yes, I will. I mean, I'll just jump right into it. Um, so my mother was a schizophrenic. Mm -hmm. And at about five years old, when my dad was at work. You know, I always knew there was something wrong, but I didn't know what it was. I was five. Yeah. But I could tell a difference in her eyes. Like if she looked mm -hmm. at me a certain way, there was a darkness, a blackness, and then she would be a different personality and then the lighter personality. Yeah. So one morning she came in my room and she said, I want you to follow me outside. I want to show you something. So she took me outside in our backyard. And I remember we had these tall sunflowers and she said, I want you to kneel down and put your face in the dirt, which I did. Mm -hmm. And then I felt a really cold, hard something in the back of my head. And what it was, was a gun. Oh my God. And she said, I have to kill you because your father loves you more than me. I heard a click. I don't remember exactly, but you know how feelings still stay within you. Oh yeah. And I was scared and here's supposed to be my primary caretaker yeah. who is going to end my life. Right. Then all of a sudden she just walked away, walked back in the house. And I don't know how long I stayed out there, but you know, five years old, where are you going to go? And yeah. so I went back in my bedroom, I fell asleep and long story short, my dad, Oh, then she came back in the room afterwards and her eyes were light. And she said, honey, I'm so mm. sorry. I didn't mean to do it. You know, please don't tell anybody it's our secret. Well, right. my dad came home later, knew something was wrong. So I ended up telling him and he had to have her committed to a mental institution for three years. Mm -hmm. um, and when she came back home, you know, I was still being raised by this woman who was on a lot of medication, but she still yeah. wasn't well. Um, so that was, you know, 18 years um, and I became very religious. I met a pastor and his wife when I was six, I started going to church and I became this little preacher girl because I was so happy to believe that there was a God, there was somebody who could look after me. Yeah. And so that's really where my faith began, uh, was right. at six years old because of that. Yeah. So how did that affect you? Like we talk about trauma in our youth and how did that affect you later in life? Like, uh, yeah. it, well, you found a positive way to deal with it as far as coping through faith, but, but how did it affect you, affect you long-term? Oh gosh, Marcy. You know, I think the biggest thing is I didn't have any self-love mm -hmm. when your mother you know, does something like that. And throughout the years of raising me, um, I never felt loved. I had an yeah. amazing father. So thank goodness I had that, but I yeah. still didn't have a sense of, of love. I learned if I performed, you know, I was on the debate team. I was, you know, cheerleader. I did things mm -hmm. that I could get some recognition and I felt right. loved, but I was looking right. outside for that. It wasn't within me. Um, so it was a natural thing, you know, to go into the business, move to LA, be on television, but I was a pretender. 
Um, yeah. I learned to have that performance. But if you looked at me on the outside, people would think, oh my gosh, she's got it all together. You know, yeah. she has this, she has that, you know, she's married to a number one producer. She's on E. I mean, all these things, yeah. which were actually coping mechanisms so people couldn't see the wounded little girl, the wounded woman. And I yeah. never had done any of that work before. So that's how it showed out in imp imposter syndrome, invisible woman yeah. syndrome. I mean, all those things that you learn to have survival skills until about, I'd say, 40. And then those survival skills that we all have, they start not working anymore. What happened for you to realize that you needed to make the change to really help yourself to get happy? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I always, like I said, I depended on faith and God, but when I moved to LA, I stopped going to church. I stopped, you know, having my spiritual practice and I you know, I became this television personality. I married, you know, like I said, a, a movie producer. We had a big life in LA, lived in Bel Air, had all these fancy friends, celebrity friends, all this stuff. And um, I met his daughter who I fell in love with because I never wanted to be a mother. Never. I didn't yeah. think I could do it. Mm -hmm. And um, I fell in love with her. And she yeah. taught me that I could be a mother. And I think mm. it was my little girl that was wounded that was relating to her because we were the same age. And so yeah. God had other plans. Um, I decided I wanted to try to get pregnant. So we did. We tried for several years, could never get pregnant. Mm -hmm. um, went through a lot of infertility and, you know, as a type A personality, you're only supposed to do a procedure like every three to four months. Well, I thought, well, if we do it every month, then, you know, oh, yeah. we'll have better returns. Yeah. So yeah. I, I beat my body up. I was in and out of hospitals, went into a coma and I became lifeless. And I realized I think unconsciously, if I couldn't get pregnant, he was going to stop loving me. And yeah. so I remember I was in the hospital, just came out of a coma. He decided he wanted to come to Sun Valley, left me at home. Mm -hmm. And I'm on all these medications. I felt so lonely, isolated and completely worthless, yeah. completely mm -hmm. worthless. And I was 40 years old. And my identity crisis was, you know, I didn't know who I was. Right. So I did the unthinkable and I tried to take my life. Mm. And um, again, God intervened. I guess it wasn't mm -hmm. my time. Yeah. And when I was in the hospital and I came to, you know, I remember the social worker saying, do you remember what you did? Mm -hmm. And I didn't. And then she told me and I was shocked at who I'd become because mm -hmm. I wasn't yeah. that girl. Um, yeah. So I decided I need some help. So that's when I moved out of LA, came to Sun Valley because we had a second home here. And I just thought, you know what? I need to get all this BS of LA off of me and get yeah. real. And I went back to going to church. I went back to getting out in nature. I went back to, you know, working with mentors and other people and really began the process of inner, of inner healing. And that's where it does start. And, and Perry, like, thank you so much for sharing it. Uh, unfortunately, we're, we're running out of time, but I want to hear, and I want the, um, the viewers to hear, where are you today? And what exactly has helped you to transform yourself so others know that it's possible for them? Yes. I, I tell women that I work with in workshops and stuff. I said, look, I'm living proof. I hit rock bottom. And if you're mm -hmm. at that point, remember one thing, you don't know that your next best chapter is on its way. So don't yeah. give up on yourself, you know, and I created, it's going to sound so weird in marketing, but somebody said something to me, can you write what you did to heal? And mm -hmm. I went back to school at 55. I went and got my master's in spiritual psychology mm -hmm. and it was, it was wonderful and helped me heal and heal my relationship with my mom because we were able to forgive each other. 
And um, so I wrote a workbook and it's the five steps and activator steps on how to transform your life. And mm -hmm. so I know I put it in a workbook so that people can go through the same steps I did. Mm -hmm. And it's not rocket scientist at all. It's just, you have a guide yeah. and then some questions that you really ask yourself and be truthful, be mm -hmm. vulnerable and have a belief that no matter what you can heal and yeah. it's never too late. You know, yeah. I, I want to say to everybody's listening, it's not too late for you to heal. Right. And I'm in my sixties now and I found a great love, you know, I was married and divorced four times mm -hmm. um, because I kept marrying yeah. my mother. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, I, I hear you. And that's the thing, right? I mean, it's yeah. really, our, yes. our past truly affects our relationship pattern. Yes. And, yes. um, but just it's incredible to see where you are today and also to be able to help others know that it is possible for them like you know we are living proof it is possible and yes. and have a guide and just for everyone yes. to know you know you're not alone and you must take these steps to make the change to create yes. change you must make the, ch the changes and uh, uh, you follow this your guide sounds like it will really help but i also <laughs> wanted like so, you know, point out your book where you are telling oh. about transformational stories also. So learning yes. through other people's transformational stories. So congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, Marcy. Yeah, yeah. we all inspire each other. I mean, isn't that our goal? Instead yeah. of being in competition with each other, it's like, how can we inspire? And like you said earlier, share our vulnerabilities and how yeah. did we do it? and share yeah. that because we want everyone to shine their lights even brighter, you know, stop playing small, get right. rid of all these obstacles and things and go for the healing. So you can live the life that you were meant to live. And I, I always think say, that's Perry, I really say, <laughs> yeah. And I always say, Perry, that it starts with self-love. It really, yes. truly does. It all starts yes. there. And so thank you so much for coming on wake up with Marcy and just sharing such valuable information and your truth. So thank you for making oh, a difference you. to others. Thank you, sweetie. I so enjoyed it. Thanks for having me. All right, Perry. Bye-bye. See ya. <laughs>